So, Rick, what is a Shangri-La? Maybe give us a little tour. What is a Shangri-La? Hi. Most of what you hear, but... This was a master control bedroom. This is no master control music room. Well, let me ask you now, now that the, the last waltz is over, what are you, what are you doing now? Uh... Eddie, why don't you... Yeah. Just making music, you know. Oh, yeah. Trying to stay busy. It's good. It's healthy. Take you. I mean, otherwise you would never go to such a situation. And because of the music, it took us through, it took us everywhere. It took us to some strange places. Physically and spiritually? Physically, spiritually, and psychotically. It just always wasn't on the stage. Even though you were on the stage? Even though we were on the stage. that we knew at the time. He could play better than anybody we ever heard. And Garth joined the band if we would uh, make him the music teacher. And then we didn't know why or what that was all about, but we said, sure, you know, I mean, we're interested anyway. And we uh, had to pay him $10 a week each for these music lessons. Then I was sure it was a riff. But then I found out what it really was, was that where he was coming from and his musical education, to tell his parents at this point that he was joining a rock and roll band would have been like just pouring it down the drain. So he justified it to his uh, people and his background by being a music teacher. There, there is a view that uh, jazz is evil because it comes from evil people, but actually the greatest priest on 52nd Street. The road was our school. It gave us a sense of survival. It taught us all we know. There's not much left that we can really take from the road. You know, we've had our share of... Or maybe it's just superstitious. Superstitious in what way? No, you can press your luck. The road has taken a lot of the great ones. Hank Williams, Buddy Holly, 
Otis Redding, Janice, Jimi Hendrix, Elvis. It's a goddamn impossible way of life. It is, isn't it? No question about it. <laughs>